Hey guys, I'm GML Waffle, and today we're going to be starting a really cool series on platformer games. So this series is going to be broken up into several parts, all covering different features and functions that you can add to your own platformer game. And today we're just going to start with the bare bones basics, movement, gravity, and collision. Alright, so as usual with my tutorials, I've gone ahead and created the sprites, and I've got the objects set up. So if we go in here, this is our sprite for our player just this basic little one-eyed monster looking guy and we've got this sprite for our wall okay so you'll notice here that it's a little bit uh, not full opacity that's actually about half opacity and we'll get into that a little bit later but basically I'm gonna be showing you how to use tiles rather than taking up lots of memory with several wall objects all looking different and this will just help clean things up in your game and make it run a bit faster all right so then we've got our wall object I named it con underscore wall that stands for controller because it's not an actual per se object we're not gonna have it appear in the room we're also gonna click visible off okay we don't want it to be visible when we run our game that's because we're using tiles these are basically just going to be invisible placeholders for our collision all right and then our object for our player all right so if we want to go ahead and just jump right in we need to add a create event to start initializing some variables all right so we'll add some code in there and here's something cool you can do with game maker if you do two that's a comment right so this is just ignored by the system doesn't actually show in game but if you do three and then say something like initialize variables if you close your code you'll notice that your code tab here now says initialize variables so that's something really handy for say you have several different code blocks that all manage and run different things and it's kind of a way to clean things up well now you can keep track of what's what so that's pretty cool so initialize variables our first variable is going to be grav we're not going to use the built-in gravity we're going to set our own and we're going to set it to 0.4 then we need h speed we're going to set it to zero for now v speed also going to set it to zero jump speed and we're going to set that to seven and move speed and move speed is going to be set to five all right, so now we have all of our variables set. We can go ahead and close the create event. We're done with it. Now we need to add a step event, add some code. All right, so the first thing we're gonna handle is our player input, all right? And I'm gonna be sure to use lots and lots of comments just to make sure everything stays nice and neat. And if we need to go back and change things later in the series, we can find what actually does what. All right, so player input. The first thing we need to get is right key equals keyboard check word D next we need our left key we're gonna set it to keyboard check word a and last we need a jump key and we're going to set it to keyboard check pressed word W all right and one more thing we need to add to our left key is a minus at the beginning and I'll explain this in just a minute okay because you're probably wondering why we're setting it up like this and not saying if keyboard check and going about it that way I'll cover that in just a minute all right so the next thing we need to do is make a new variable called move and set it to equal left key plus right key and then set our H speed equal to move times our move speed yeah I didn't capitalize that okay all right now I can give you a little bit of a rundown of exactly what this does so we are setting these variables to our keyboard input so our right key is currently set to zero since D is not being pressed but when we press D, it's going to set right key equal to one. 
same with left key however since we added this minus we are making it opposite of whatever we press so it's currently set to zero but if we pressed it it would equal negative one and jump key is the same as the first one zero and then one when it's pressed all right so this new variable we created called move is set to equal left key plus right key so you're probably wondering okay what is that exactly does that do so move equals say zero plus zero right now but if we press right move would equal one if we if we pressed our left key move would equal negative one and if we pressed them both it would equal back out to zero because negative one plus one is zero so then below that we're setting our h speed to equal move times our move speed so if we pressed right key which is d it would equal one times our move speed which is set to five so our h speed would be set to five and the reason we set this to negative is because we want to get this to a negative value all right so negative one if we press left negative one times five is negative five and you'll remember I'm just going to say this is uh, pointless because we're not actually keeping this. So this is just for the example. All right. So you'll remember if keyboard check word. Oh, I don't need that word. A. Right. So this is our left key. We need it to go X minus equals five because left would be a negative value so that's what this is doing for us all right hopefully that was a good explanation if you have any questions be sure to comment i'm always available all right so the next thing we need to do is add our gravity so we're going to say if our vertical speed is less than 10 our vertical speed is going to plus equal our gravity okay pretty simple next we're gonna throw some jumping in there we're gonna say if place meeting X comma Y plus one and then our controller wall open bracket our V speed is going to equal our jump key times negative jump speed all right, so this is following the same principle as our movement left and right, okay? So if we're touching the floor below us, x, y plus 1, our vertical speed then equals jump key if we press the jump key. Because remember, it's currently set to 0, but if we press it, it's going to then equal 1. So then it's 1 times negative jump speed. So we want to go up. And to move up, you have to go y minus equals whatever distance you want. So we're setting this to negative, so the whole value is negative. All right, now that that's done, we can move on to our collisions. So the first one we're going to do is the vertical collision. And we are going to say if place meeting x y plus our vertical speed oh not a plus plus our vertical speed con wall and then our open brackets then we're going to tab over and say while not place meeting x y plus sign v speed con wall open brackets again then our y plus equals sine v speed and then under this we need to set v speed equal to zero and then all the way underneath it we need to say y plus equals vertical speed all right so i've done an explanation of what this code does in my first basic movement tutorial if you want to go back and check that out, you can. I'm not going to go into great detail about what this does. So what we can actually do, just to simplify things and save a little bit of time, 
copy all of that, move down, paste it, change this to horizontal collision. And what we're going to do is change everything from Y plus V speed to X plus H speed. Okay. Same thing with this, not place meeting instead of Y plus sine V speed. We're going to say X plus sine H speed. Okay. And then we can change this to X plus equals sine H speed. H speed equals zero. X plus equals H speed. What we're going to do now is actually go through and add tiles and the wall and player objects to our room. So if we go into backgrounds here, you'll notice I've loaded in tile underscore brick. And this is a fixed tile set that I showed in my previous tiles tutorial. So we're going to go into our room here. Zoom out a bit. All right, so if we want to go to tiles and select our tile brick, I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward and speed through the creation of this tile set in the room. All right, so there's our basic tile set created in the room. All right, so if we zoom in here and check off the grid, see we've got this nice little layout going. Got our object for our player created in here. All right, so if we actually just wanna move him over a little bit. All right, so if we hit play, there's one thing that you'll notice right off the bat. We fall and we go right through. That's because these tiles are just tiles. There's actually no collision or anything going on for them because remember, we set everything to collide with controller underscore wall. So if we go into our room again, zoom in here, go to our objects. So we need our controller wall and we can just create it nice along the edge here. There we go. All right, so now we have collision set exactly where we need it. This is great for freeing up space, not having nearly as many objects created, taking up memory and overpowering your CPU, yada yada. Anyway, notice how they're kind of opaque. If we go ahead and run the game, you'll notice that we can't see them in the room. And remember that's because we unchecked the visible box in our object itself. But moving around here, you can see that we jump, we collide with the walls, there's no overlapping, nothing nasty looking, and everything's working perfectly. So this has been the first part in our new platformer series. I hope you guys are as excited for it as I am. I'm really excited to get into the next couple parts where we actually get to start doing cool platformer things like moving platforms, ledge grabbing, swimming, wall jumping, etc, etc. So if you guys liked this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to comment what you thought down below and comment some future suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe for those future videos to come out, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.